Hi, in this video, we'll demonstrate how to use uh, the capabilities to capture data on successive flow units in the model. Uh, it can be done in multiple ways. Um, and we'll also talk about how to then uh, display that data in the notebook. Um, so we'll first start with um, using first of the options called a database. Uh, and uh, actually, before we go into that, let me change uh, the runtime parameters so that we do not run it for too long or collect, create lots of data. So I will run 1,600 hours, which is like 10 months, uh, 40 hours a week, 160 hours a month, and so 10 months. Uh, okay, and so then I'll go ahead and add database in here or, or write the database block but before we write the database block, I guess we can let's do that first here just to make sure okay well let's just make sure that yeah that's in the right place okay I'm just trying to get a line right oh well um and so we have uh, the right data block in there, but we need to define a database. We go to database, a new database, give it a name. Let's call it process time DB. And so whatever you want to collect, uh, in this case, just to, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to just collect process times of each uh, flow unit passing through. I'll go ahead uh, and create a new table, call it uh, proc time table, create new table, and then I'll go ahead and define fields for that. Uh, so I'll say current time, let uh, save an next field, and then process time. So current time is when the unit is passing through uh, and then what's the its process time? That's what we want to see here. I'll also do a right click, so edit table properties, and click on here, delete all records every run. So we, I will just collect data from one run. And if I'm going to make another run, I want to clear out all the previous data and just collect uh, from this run. Okay, so the data is defined, or the database is defined. And now in here, I want to make sure we set up the parameters, what we want to write. So we want to write in the table, uh, we haven't selected a database first, so we need to select a database, process time. Then we select a table field, a uh, table, and so that we can select now from that particular database. The field that we want to write, uh, we write the current time first record every for the first field we would typically use last record for plus one so that whenever we write in the next record uh, we uh, will this will allow us to go to the next record a uh, light source for the time we'll use a connector we set up a uh, input the time into this block then we in the second row let's add another row resize or, or Okay, and so in here, we want to now get the other uh, field, process time. And instead of last plus one, just one last record, because we want to write in the same row uh, for the what's the current time and what was the process time for the unit passing through. And this will get from an attribute of the flow unit, which is the process time. Okay, I believe we should be all set with this. Okay, we say okay, and we run. Ah, we have to provide a time value. So for that, I'll go to utilities. Uh, sorry, value. Uh, pick up the simulation variable, and that defaults to time. Uh, you can put a uh, different kind of. Uh, parameters in here, but the default value is time. So we'll just go with time. And we'll connect that connector here. 
to read that in. Now we can run it. And so we completed 1,578 requests. And if we open the selected table, we'll see those uh, 1,578 requests, what time they went through, exited the process, and how much, what was their process time. So that's one way of collecting data on flow units. Uh, another way is to use a history block. That uh, per, history block is really for uh, debugging, but um, it can be used for this purpose here, just to collect data. If, as long as you're collecting data on uh, less than 1,000 units, because it captures only 999 rows, uh, and then it starts rewriting over. As I said, since it's really for debugging purposes, that could work fine. But here is a history block here. And so here you have to say, if, again, it will capture arrival of time unit, uh, arrival time for the unit that's passing through. And then whatever fields we want to capture, again, we want to capture process time, say, okay, run. And if we go in here, we'll see these values. And you can see it's starting uh, overwriting. Uh, after writing 900, uh, 1,000 lines, it went back and started overwriting from here. Uh, so that's why it's not starting from a small time. And somewhere in the middle, you will find until where it wrote. So yeah, it wrote, overwrote. Now uh, we did say 1578 units, so yeah, it overwrote up to here. Uh, and it has the previous data down here. So there's a downside for this one. You would want to use it only in the models where you're sure this would never exceed um, 999 units if you're using it for the purpose of collecting the data instead of uh, debugging. Uh, a third way of doing this would be to use the cost feature of uh, test uh, extensive. And so it has a feature where you can have model as if the unit is traveling you have to, you can keep adding cost to it based on the value added and then at the end you can capture what was the final cost of the item leaving the model uh, but to do this we have to we are tricking the mod model rather than using collecting cost we want to collect the process time and so basically we'll take the process time and feed that into Into to the cost field, and and so then then this item would actually collect process time, thinking that is the cost, and that we will get those process times. And so we'll read from here property uh, the process time property. Okay. And feed that into the cost property or cost attribute. And then we are passing from where we read the property, uh, the process time here, and feed that into, uh, into the cost. We also need to tell the model we are tracking cost. And so we'll go to the create block options, say so define item costs. And let's put in a default number here. Okay. And, and so now when we run the model, if we go to the item cost block, we have the data on process times for these 1,578 units. And we can compare if we're getting the same values roughly, or not roughly, exactly. Um, so 1578, we should about to get there, 1578, so 1577, sorry, uh, and because this starts from zero. Uh, and if we look at our data table here, I'm gonna go down all the way, 1578, okay. Let's put them side by side. And so we see last one is 1599.96 and process time of 0.81. Yep, so they have both collected the same data. Uh, so, so that's how you would go about uh, 
collecting the data. Now, how would we display that or capture that uh, in uh, the notebook? So, the, so for that, we use the clone feature. And so we can put uh, a number of things, whatever we want to uh, display as results. Uh, so let's say if you wanted to show the utilization uh, of result here, uh, this got maximized here. Okay, let's cancel out of this one and open one more time. Okay, so this here, uh, let's look at the results here. Um, and so utilization is here. So if you wanted to capture that and put that in our notebook, uh, we'll use the clone feature here. So up here, there are four types of cursors. We, the third one is the clone cursor. I'll use that. Clone this field, go to notebook, put it here. And then clone this field here again, right next to it. Go back to our normal cursor, close this. So, so now, uh, this every time we make a run, this will, and if we change any parameters, it will get the updated value. Similarly, let's say we also wanted to get the maximum length of um, the Q or, or average, let's say average length. Um, so we'll go here. And in this case, it will just clone the value itself. Oh, so I got the wrong cursor here, sorry. Length uh, notebook. Okay, and so you actually can type also here. We don't necessarily need to get this data. Um, so let me use everything by copying over. I could have just typed here every length uh, and that might be better to do. So let's get rid of these guys um, and I'll just type here. Average Q length. I think I misspelled it. Let me see here. So you have to kind of determine which kind of uh, cursor we are needing at any given time. I, I did uh, misspell it. And so, so that way we can uh, set up um, these results in the notebook and show that. Uh, and, and so that uh, all the measures are at one place. All the performance measures can be shown at one place of performance measures of interest. And we can actually also show um, the value, the table from here. So I'll go clone, clone this notebook and I can clone this right here. Okay. So, so that's how we can clone uh, the performance measures of interest. Interestingly, when we copy this table over, this is still scrollable. Uh, so, so that allows you uh, to capture large tables in here just so you're getting a window into the table rather than and and which allows you to see the entire table i'll stop here hope you are able to use these different capabilities please note we do not need all three capabilities if in one model uh, we can just use one of these three options to capture data